Okay, now we're back. So, what's up guys? Uh, it's Craig, I've been away for a little while, just mostly because I've been working on my truck, back home a lot, doing the transmission swap, and I did the floor pans. Uh, the reason it's take everything's taking so long is because I've never done a trans swap and I've never done floor pans. So the floor pans took a lot longer than expected. It's taken me about a week, week and a half to do both floor pans completely and finish them. So I'm trying to get back on schedule by taking a break, coming up here and doing something with my chassis. Not really sure what I'm gonna get done today. Hopefully I can get the dowel pin holes drilled that the front end will sit in and then probably knock off the broken leaf spur purges in the back. Um, but regardless, it'll be something fun, something different. So hopefully I can just get myself back on the upload schedule. I don't think I've even uploaded a video in like a week. So I just kind of want to get myself back into the swing of things. So we're gonna start getting to work on this chassis. I don't have a step drill bit because I forgot it and then I lost it and then now I don't have one. So I'll probably just end up having to use regular drill bits and I'm just gonna break them. It's probably gonna be a big mess, but we're gonna make it work. So yeah, we're gonna get working on this. I honestly think one of the most satisfying things in life. Oh yeah, is actually being able to get these rivets out. Look at that, I actually was lucky enough to get both of them out and they're perfectly flush. Heck yeah, it's like you wanna keep these as souvenirs or something. I mean, geez, look at how thick these things are. Sweet, on to the next one. So now I've got these both out, I'm pretty much gonna start from the front hole on each side and measure back from the edge of the hole. So the edge of that hole, literally on the edge, over about 3 eighths. And that, I believe, is where we're gonna drill the hole. I think we're gonna go in a little bit, so basically it'll be a hole, a hole, and then a hole. It'll kinda like look like that. Won't be that extreme, uh, but I just need to know. From this hole, the front hole on both sides, I'm gonna do 3 eighths back from the front hole, the edge of that front hole, uh, three eighths of an inch. So if I put a tape measure on that, and then I gotta make sure once I mark where that hole is, I'll pretty much put a tape measure on that line, make sure they're exactly 31 and a half apart because that is what the dowel pin width is. So I make sure that they will slide in perfectly and snug and not be crooked or crab balk or anything like that. All right, so I'm kind of gonna show you kind of what I got going on here. Uh, this is pretty difficult, I know. Um, so from inside of the wall of the frame rail to the other side is exactly 33 inches. And from the inside of the rail to the other side, I measured as 29 and a quarter. Um, those, you can take those measurements, if they help you out. Um, but I'm gonna use the 33 inches from wall to wall just because it's a whole number, it's a little bit easier. And I know that those dowel pins are 31 and a half, so it just makes sense with common math, 31 and a half and 33. I should take three quarters off of each side to give me that one and a half back. So if I go ahead, and this tape measure is really starting to get bent up. So if I go ahead, so I'm gonna use my two. So my two is lined up right on the edge of the wall. So you'll pretty much put the tape measure right to where it starts to get vertical, right where it get ver gets vertical, and that's how you'll know you're right on that edge. And if you go ahead and look through this top hole of the frame, that's kinda what makes it pretty easy to look through. Um, if not, here. There, so you guys can see. So if the inch is measured up right there, I've got, you can see the two is right up against the wall of the frame rail and you can actually see the three quarters in between my two fingers and the punch I made right there. So that's all I know, I'm good there. And then if I come back, here's another little spot. You can actually see, once I move this, get that out of the way, um, my hole that I punched is literally almost, not quite, at the very top of this, uh, this hole here. So if you really wanted to, to kind of help you out, it wouldn't be a terrible thing to go ahead and actually draw a line on top of the frame because that'll probably help you out when you're making your mark. But now I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. So the one on this side is actually low. You can see that horizontal line is much further below that, uh, this ring here. So I know that it's it's off. So I'm gonna remeasure um, and put my two, same thing I did on the other side. I'm just killing a couple inches because the, the end of this is not right. It'll add like a 16th, I think. Um, so I put it right up to the wall, about there. My three quarter mark, it's nice to actually hear, you're on a stand, so let me kind of spin this around, just so I can rest my tape measure on the stool I got going here. So if I got 
my two on the edge of the wall, I come back three quarters of an inch, my mark is right at the center of that dot. So then I can go ahead, transfer it over to a horizontal line across that so it's easier to see. So I'll pretty much go ahead and make all this shorter. Line up my tape measure from the top, look down through this hole. It makes it a little easier if you look through the hole. So you can see it completely vertically. All right, so there's my new line there, and you can actually see, just like the other side, my new line is right at the top of this hole, almost. It's pretty freaking close, but. Okay, so there's my new line that I drew. I pretty much put a dot and then did a horizontal line, so it's a little bit easier to see. And you can see on this side, uh, it's kind of, I can't, I don't have a DSLR, so I can't actually look through the hole and make sure I am looking through the hole, but if I could, I hope you guys can probably possibly see something. This, the top of this hole here is lined up with this hole. Very, very close. There'll probably be maybe a 30 second difference between them. But if I go back over to this one, you can see that punch hole is pretty much at the top of that guy right there. They're almost dead even. Um, so if you're having a hard time measure, I think that's what I would go off of. Pretty much just trying to make that almost parallel. Uh, I think it's the difference from the edge of the inside edge of this and that hole I believe is a 30 second. I think that's literally the only difference. I think this pin hole is a 30 second that way towards the wall of the frame. Uh, but now I'm gonna go ahead and before I punch this hole in, I'm gonna take my tape measure, line it up on an inch increment on that hole and measure 31 and a half somewhere on this line because this is kind of a thick line. And I'm gonna take my punch and go ahead and punch the extra hole in and then measure it one more time. So I've been taking off two inches off of each side. And the 33 then becomes my 31. And so a half inch after that goes right up pretty much to where I was before. So my half inch mark lines up right with my line. So now I gotta go ahead and take a punch and try to hold all this. And check that. Okay, so now I have a tiny little punch hole. Before I keep doing it, I'm gonna measure it again. It's a lot of measuring to make sure this thing's straight. But I wanna make sure it's straight the first time, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing. All right, there it is. So my one half mark, if I stare at it from the top, I don't know, if it's probably off a little bit for you guys, but when I stare at it up top, top, you can probably see that little one half fraction goes directly in the center of that punch hole. The punch hole is probably pretty dark for you, so I'll go ahead and make it a little larger, but it is perfect. I measured it like four times, so I know it's good now. All right, so now I can go ahead and get you guys just a little closer because I know my line's good, and I'm using this top hole up here to kind of guess, so you can see it kind of wiggle it around, and then just like that, it pops in. I'm gonna snap it a few more times. All right, there we go. So I hope you guys can see that. Uh, it is a GoPro. So this gap from here is three eighths of an inch. And then from the wall to this hole, I believe was three quarters of an inch. And this, this hole, little punch here, all the way to this one should measure exactly 31 and a half. Um, and that's why I'm saying to kind of use this rim here to kind of make sure that you're in the right spot on this end. Make sure you can get it measured up good because uh, those are kind of help you guide it to make sure it's even left and right. Now, this is such a small hole. We're drilling a three quarter inch hole. So it's gonna be pretty big and that'll kind of space itself out. And these are kind of like a nylon almost, kind of kind of dowel pin. So I'm not really worried about it being a 16th of an inch off or a 32nd of an inch off left or right. Um, this is actually straighter than the factory suspension because I believe I believe one of the I-beams was or one of the kingpins was set a 16th of an inch forward and the other one was set a 16th of an inch back. I, I think, I'm pretty positive. Um, but either way, I think this measurement will do and we can work on drilling. All right, so I went ahead and visually wrote out everything that I, that I have going here. So the width from the edge of this circle to this line is three eighths of an inch. That's just a simple measurement. You can go over, draw a line, put a dot, and then go horizontal from that and draw a line. And then 
from the inside width of the frame rail, you can see that's kind of where uh, you'll be. And then width wise in from that, you want to go three quarters of an inch. That'll put you pretty much right on the money with that dot. Um, and then you can kind of gauge yourself by using the top edge of that rivet hole and kind of going over. And then from pinhole to pinhole, you're going to want to be 31 and a half inches apart. So if you do do those and for whatever reason, they don't seem to match up, then you're going to want to go back before you make that pinhole any larger. Just punch it once and then it's going to stay small. So go back and make sure it's, if you're 16th of an inch off, kind of go next to it and punch a hole again. Um, just try to get them as close as you can. If it's a 32nd of an inch off, really shouldn't matter left or right. You are drilling a three quarter inch hole. So it's a really large hole. So whatever you don't get, you'll usually make back up by drilling that large hole. If you kind of push one way or pull the other way as you're drilling. So I'm not really too worried about it, but it does look very centered considering that the top edge of this hole almost lines up with that. And the same thing's going on on this side. It's the, that pinhole is just barely, barely above the rim of that circle. Um, so you can, you can kind of use that to guide, guide yourself. It might help you out. Um, but those are kind of my measurements. So you can take it as you want. That's kind of where I'm putting it. Um, hopefully that helps you out. All right, so after taking a second look, you can actually measure a better way to check if you don't feel comfortable because it is a curve right there, that three quarter inch uh, little length right there. Uh, there's another way you can't measure it and it's from the edge here to that little pinhole. And that, that is a inch and an eighth as you can see right there. Uh, if I go ahead and I put that two inch mark right on that pin, see right there I'm on that mark you come down you're an inch and an eighth you can see the inch mark for the three and then it's an eighth to the edge of the frame and I'm still at the center of that pinhole I come to the very other side do the exact same thing if I come to the side and do the exact same thing I can put my two right next to the hole look at that we're right at an inch and an eighth and that works out well because if you think about it when I first said the inner length of this section of the frame from this side to that side was actually 29 and a half, 29 and a quarter inches apart. And we have an inch and an eighth and an inch and an eighth and an inch and an eighth is two and a quarter and two and a quarter plus 29 and a quarter is 31 and a half. So you kind of think about the math, it actually works out. So we have that inch and an eighth on each side that equals two and a quarter, the 29 and a quarter was right here. Plus each side gives you the 31 and a half that you need. All right guys, so I went ahead and I transferred my mark. I hope there's no glare uh, right there. I went ahead and transferred it to the bottom, which is basically inch and an eighth in, three eighths over, and uh, went ahead and punched it. So now we can go ahead and start drilling this thing out, measure it again. Still dead perfect at an inch and an eighth. And then from the edge of this hole, I have exactly three eighths still. So now I can use my step drill bit. I'm gonna go ahead and grease it up just so it doesn't get hot. Okay, go ahead and spray some liquid grease on it. Now this is gonna get probably pretty messy. You probably noticed I put a jacket on and gloves just because those burrs are super hot when they come off. And uh, I'm working with what I have, so I just found some gloves and I found a welding jacket. This isn't my garage or my shop, um, so I managed to find that. I don't have a, 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 like a face mask shield. I wish I did, um, but our hole looks pretty good. So you can see it's still in the center of our line and I went ahead and measured it and it's still centered. So this should actually line up perfectly once we put the frame in or the, the little pins in. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing to this side and slide the frame over and we should line up. Okay, we got our holes drilled. Uh, I did both sides. You can see there's the new one. You can see it's in the center of that line as well as the same thing over here. They're dead even of each other. They're the same size. I measured them, they're 31 and a half apart. So this frame, or this cradle should fit perfectly on these holes. So now what I'm gonna do is reset this up as a chair, and then we're gonna go ahead and slide this thing over and see if it ever fits.
Okay, so let me kind of explain what went on. Uh, this hole I had literally perfect. Um, I just went ahead and deburred it a little bit more, just to kind of give it a little bit of a larger tolerance. Um, and it slipped right in. You can see it fits very, very snug. Um, it's just right up to the, the point of the flat side of the dowel pin. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a flat side of the dowel, dowel pin you can see, and it goes right up to it. So as you can see if it pops back in. There we go. So if you just kind of if you can hit it, it'll, it'll go down. Uh, so that that side's in and then this side I messed up on this side uh, I'm almost embarrassed to say it. My measurements weren't wrong However, I simply just didn't get the punch in the right spot and then uh, yeah Of course my drill bit walked but you can see my original line that I had going on Dow pins right where it was So but that's okay. This is okay because this pin is just holding it in. It's not gonna be the only thing holding this thing in so and this pin is completely uh, round all the way so that'll center it pretty well and then this pin over here uh, it, It's a very tight up front on both sides. I mean if I walk this thing back and forth It's not going literally anywhere. So I mean We've got it pretty like you can see it. It's we're not moving at all And I mean you just have those pins in it. So I'm not worried about that too much I'm kind of really upset that I got that off. I mean, but I was off by like a 16th at most I think I was off, yeah, by a 16th that direction. Uh, pretty upset about that one side, but it is straight. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that it's actually in now. So basically, where the frame is sitting is current ride height at stock springs, and I plan to do a lowering spring. So this was the one that had all my extra measurements, and I think I just did this one a little bit better. That one I just had a line, and I have to go off the line, but you can see my line was where it should have been, so. Like I said, it was three eighths back and then uh, an inch and an eighth inward. So I think it might be beneficial to almost say that you could go an inch and an eighth and maybe just deburr it a little bit and pull it towards you. And that might give you just that little bit of extra tolerance to go ahead and slap it down. Uh, but it's such a small amount that it really shouldn't matter. And the frame should be able to flex just enough to be able to pop them in at that measurement. So what I had worked, so I'm pretty happy about that. 10 straight, you can see, I mean, yeah, so I mean, I'm looking at this reference right here on that side versus this side, they're literally identical. So this all just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable that everything is correct. Uh, all right guys, so I think we'll call it there. Uh, I'm really, really happy the way this is came, coming out so far. My measurements were dead on, it looked like. Uh, so I know it's very, very uh, kind of a sketchy part to put those those holes in the frame because if you're off, the whole front end's gonna be off. That's what centers the frame before you weld it. Uh, and some people even use those and put bolts through it and don't weld at all. But regardless of how you do it, that's very, very important. And places I've looked around, uh, forums and different videos. I kind of based my measurements off of theirs and trusted theirs and I had a couple issues and then I kind of just went back and measured like 30 more times and just double checked everything and made sure I used a caliper to kind of use the edge of the caliper and up against the frame and measured the side of the holes and the center of the holes and all over the place forward backwards and side to side to make sure that those holes were straight. They are straight. The only reason the driver's side one got messed up was just because I did not center the punch in the correct spot and it caused the drill bit to walk off to the side. My fault, but it's okay because I actually moved it forward. They're very snug now. They are aligned in the correct spot. So I hope this helped you out. If it did, give it a big thumbs up. That would mean the world to me. Uh, share this with a friend. Let me know what you do think down in the comments below. Any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know, and I'll try to help address them. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.